Welcome back to the shop. I'm going to try and show you how I do the CAN bus daisy chain wiring. I'm going to do the uh, connector that goes from the primary flight display. It uh, goes to the autopilot and then from the autopilot it's going to go up to the audio panel. Those are all like real close together there. And I'm going to try and get the camera set up here. And I've tried making this video a couple of times and I always have some sort of camera issue or other problem. So let me show you what I've got kind of started here. Um, this is coming from the primary flight display. And I've got it uh, pre-stripped, I guess, or pulled out. Um, I think I showed this earlier where you, you rotate around here with the razor blade to... Uh, get the uh, insulation cut then you bend it around a little bit like that it breaks it free then you have to slit it this way and then pull that in outside shell or insulation off of there then you uh, bend the uh, whole thing over make a window and then you pull these two conductors out of the shield ground that's what this is here and then I'll use that to put the ring terminal on and ground that to the um, the back shell or the connector that goes on there so that's uh, that's one of them, and then the other one is over here, and I've got it pre-stripped and actually uh, ready to go. It's shortened a little bit because I like to lay the two together like this, so you see the end of them right here. I like to lay those together, and eventually um, I'll put a zip tie down here to uh, stabilize everything. But so for now, and you can see here, I probably need to shorten these short ones just a little bit more because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to strip a window in here, and that's where these are going to get soldered on. So here's, here's the big dilemma with the CAN bus daisy chain. You have to plug this into the connector, but then these have to also be on those same two pins to go to the next appliance. So I like to do this window in here and I'm going to show you that part that's really the the only trick that I do it seems to work good for me there's probably a couple of other ways to do this but this seems to work and I've got soldering iron warming up over there but I'm going to shorten these up a little bit because I want to put my window about right in the middle of that and then I'm going to wrap those wires around here and then solder those on and that's the solder connection part of all this so I'm going to just shorten these up a little bit We'll just go back to the start of it. I think I'll have enough there. And this just needs just enough. I mean, it doesn't have to be extra stripped. Uh, you don't need any extra length here. You're going to wrap this around a couple of times and then solder it on. So you can see there that in the stripper, I'm just about maxed out. I can't go up a whole lot closer or I'll butt into the end of the sheath or the shield or the insulation pull this back out of the way this is 22 gauge uh, typical stuff I got this from Stein 22 gauge 2 conductor twisted shielded pair so there I've got them let me find the other wire now and we'll lay them together here and you can kind of see what I'm shooting for. So now I can even take a, a pen and mark that to try to get it the window in about the right place. Um, it's not critical because I can pull this one back or push it forward a little bit if I want to. It's just not real, not real critical, but just to try and make them look nice. So I just put a little mark on that wire. That's kind of be about where I'm gonna put the window strip. But before I do that, the trick, I guess, in all this, is to strip the end of it a little bit extra long, and then I'll put the connector on it. So this one's a little bit, that would be probably typical, that might be a touch too long, but I'm going to go about twice what I would normally do. And then we'll go ahead and put the connector on it. or the, the pin. So you're gonna see here that when I get that on there, and this is hard for me to see because I think I said earlier in one of the other videos, I usually usually look through 
a magnifier, I'm gonna do that. Cause I can't see good enough anymore to, this stuff is so darn small. So now I got the, now I got the pin on there and I think you can see that there is wire exposed here, which is not typically what you want. But in this case, I'm gonna crimp that pin on there just like you would normally. That leaves me exposed conductor there, which you don't want. But now, and I don't quite see the mark on it that I made on there, but I'm going to put it in about the middle. I can hold the other wire up there, but it's going to go about where I want just by bottoming out over here. And so now if you watch this, when I strip it, it's going to push that piece of insulation up against the that connect or that uh, that pin and then it opens up the window right here and that's where I'm gonna solder that second wire on there now I do the same thing on the other wire here put a connector on it or a pin be nice if I used the correct terminology when it'd be easier for you to follow along Pin on there, Get the crimper. Give it a tug, make sure it's gonna stay on there. And put this one in about the same spot. And I just watch it as I'm stripping it. I just push that bit of insulation up there until it bottoms out against that pin. So now I've got two windows stripped here. And I've got this piece of wire all ready to go. Lay it up against that. And I like to have them so they both kind of start in the same spot. I want to make sure I got the right color going here, and I don't. So let me try and twist one of them around. You want blue and blue or blue white. I, I call that a blue, even though it's a blue white stripe. But uh, the other wire is solid white. So I call one of them blue and the other one white. So we're going same color to same color, blue to blue to blue and white to white. Line them up like that. And then just Twist them to get a good mechanical connection. That's going to hold it together while I solder it. <laughs> I'm out of the damn camera, aren't I? Can you see what I'm doing now? And if I end up with a little bit extra hanging over there, I'll clip that off now before I solder it. You want to be careful on this step that you don't clip your wire. Right, we got that. And at this point, it probably would have been good for me to put the zip tie on there already because it's, it's going to kind of want to come apart on me if I'm not careful. I'm using the helping hands here. You can use the, uh, I've seen guys use the strippers. That works too. Um, I have these and they work pretty good for me. There, I think you can see all that. So now I'm all set to uh, solder these two spots and then after I do, I'll slide some heat shrink over those. And we'll be done with that part. This is just regular Unger soldering iron and regular hardware store rosin core solder. I like to make sure I don't have too much solder there. That'll just bulge out and create problems when you heat shrink it. You don't want it, uh, a whole bunch of big blob of solder on there because that's just going to make it uh, harder to work with. And here's, here's the big problem I don't like with this whole approach. I don't know of another way around it, but now these wires are a little bit stiff. 
So I'm going to make sure that when I put this into the connector that I get it wrapped good. And um, But I mean, here's the classic spot where if there's any vibration going on in these wires, they're going to break there. And uh, no real way around it. This is how everybody does it. I don't agree with it. I don't like it. I mean, I, what are you going to do? So now we'll put heat shrink over those two. Here's your shield drains. And it should be long enough. Um, that's something else I could I could probably clip these off and put and shorten these up and put two new connectors there or pins to make sure that this is going to be long enough or I can twist this together and crimp in a, a green shield drain wire and then uh, put the ring terminal on that to go to the back show but uh, I don't think I need to show you how to put heat shrink on I'm going to I'm going to put it on there so that it's covering a good amount of those two uh, solder joints I'll uh, even put heat shrink down here to hold these together and then eventually there'll be a zip tie down here holding it and then that'll go to the uh, to the ring terminal. Um, I think I can show you here on this one. This is for my engine analyzer. It's pretty much already done and put together. So there you see CAN bus wire coming right up here and it's daisy chained I'm pretty sure. Yeah, because this one goes from the engine analyzer, it's going to go out to, it's actually going to a, an auxiliary connector, a disconnect that goes to the wing for the roll servo. But what I wanted to show you was that the uh, those two shields right there are probably both from the CAN bus, and they just go into that ring terminal, and then that gets screwed to the back shell. So that's what it'll look like on that autopilot that we just did. That's it for now. See you next time.